Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss about logistic regression. Logistic regression is a type of classification technique. If you remember, we have discussed earlier the difference between classification and clustering. In classification, what we have? We have an object or a data point, we want to put it in a particular class. right? So, to do that, we have to start with a training data set and we should first define different classes. For example, we may define three different classes or two different classes like for example, uh, diseased person, non-diseased person, two classes. So, we will have two class labels. So, we will define class labels. Then what we will do? We will take a data set which we will call training data set which is labeled. That means, for this disease, non-disease case, I know who are the person in my training data set have the disease and I also know those persons in my training data set who does not have the disease. So, we assign a training data to specific classes. So, we have uh, label data sets and then using this label data set, what we do? We create a classifier or a mathematical model so that that model can predict the class of an unknown sample or an unknown object. right? So, taking the example of disease and non-disease case, if I can create a predictive classifier model from the training data set where the data is labeled, I should be able to predict a new person coming to my clinic whether that person has the disease or not. Now, data uh, classification uh, can be of different type. For example, the simplest one is that you have just two classes. right? Let us start with that. We call that binary classification, uh, classification of binary data. For example, what I have written here, uh, for example, consider that you want to classify susceptibility to cardiac diseases based on the cholesterol level of a person. That means, I want to create a classifier model or classifier uh, which will help me to decide when, when a person comes to my clinic just by measuring in the cholesterol level of that person, I should be able to decide whether that person is susceptible to a cardiac problem or not. So, it is a binary problem. Either the person uh, belongs to the class of susceptible to cardiac problem or it be he or she belongs to the class of not susceptible. To create the class classifier, we need label data. So, we need uh, two types of label data. So, we need the data of category 1. In category 1, I will put all those persons who have cardiac disease and I know the cholesterol level of all those persons. It is binary, so I have another category or class, category 0. In category 0, I have all the persons who, who, uh, who uh, do not have the cardiac disease and I also know the blood cholesterol level for these people. So, I will use this label data set to create my classifier model. Take another example uh, to um, understand this issue. For example, I want to classify cells whether they are stem cells or not based upon the expression of a gene, for example, a particular stem cell marker. So, my problem is to classify cells either as stem cell or not based on expression of a particular gene, a stem cell marker. To do uh, the, the to solve this problem, to create the classifier classifier, I need a label data set with two categories or two classes, category one and category zero. In category one, I'll put I'll put all those cells which are uh, stem cells, and in category zero, I'll put non-stem cells. So in both this category one and category zero, I know the level of expression of the um, stem cell marker gene. So, now let us move further with the example of that uh, blood cholesterol level problem where we want to classify uh, people whether they are susceptible to the disease or not, uh, cardiac disease or not based on the cholesterol level. I will represent the data uh, in a visual format. So, what I have done? I have taken the data of the training set. So, these are my uh, people who do not have the, have the disease. So, they are ES category one. So, they have the disease whereas, these people the blue they do not have the disease. So, they are category 0, no they do not have the cardiac problem and I know their uh, cholesterol level. So, cholesterol level is in the horizontal axis. right? 
So you can easily see people uh, having a high cholesterol level, they are already in the class or category of susceptible to the cardiac problem, whereas people having low cholesterol level are in the category 0 and they do not have the uh, cardiac problem. There are some outlier obviously, for example, uh, these two people have low cholesterol level, but still they have cardiac problem. So, all that I will have this type of outlier. Now, uh, to we want to build a classifier model, right? So, that will be a numerical model. So, what we have done here, I have just categorized two data and uh, visually represented it. But to make it more quantitative, numerical, I will just rearrange the data, same data in a different way. What I will do, I will change this vertical axis. In the horizontal axis, I still have the cholesterol label. And what I have done, I have scaled this from 0 to 1. And what is there in my vertical axis? I have the probability of cardiac problem, probability of having cardiac problem. In other words, probability or, or the susceptibility of having the cardiac problem. So, this category 1 people, we already know they have cardiac problems, right? So, they belongs to probability 1. Whereas, those people in category 0, I know they do not have the disease. So, they all belong to the probability 0. So, I have just uh, scaled the uh, uh, vertical axis. Now, once I have this representation, I can try to fit a model, right? And when we talk of fitting a model, immediately it comes to our mind that we may do regression, for example, linear regression. You may assume that, okay, the cholesterol level, the cholesterol level may have uh, some linear relation with uh, suppose the disease, right, the cardiac disease. So, you want to fit a y equal to a uh, b x plus a type linear equation to this uh, data set, right. And I have done that. So, this is my uh, linear regressed line, the pink one. If I leave this outlier, if I leave them and even if I leave this one, you can visually see it quite a good fit. So, now if uh, this is my classifier model, this is a linear classifier model which gives a linear relation between cholesterol level and the probability of having the cardiac problem. Suppose I have this model with me now, I know the equation that is uh, y equal to b x plus a, where x is the cholesterol level, y is the probability. So, if I have this model now and suppose a new person comes to my clinic, so that person has suppose uh, the cholesterol level here, then I can use this straight line to predict whether that person belongs to disease category or not disease category. For example, if I consider this came to point 6. So, that means the probability that the person will have the cardiac disease is 0 0.6, it is above 0 0.5, I can consider 0 0.5 as a cutoff and I can say that person belongs to category 1 or disease, right. This is so simple to do. But if you look carefully, this linear model, this linear classifier model that I have done by linear regression has a problem. Let me explain. Suppose I have one person in my clinic whose cholesterol level is very high here. Now, if I go up vertically, then I will reach somewhere here and then if I go uh, horizontally from there, I will reach somewhere here and this will be something like suppose 1.2. Now, probability cannot be bigger than 1. Right? So, this is mathematically not possible, it does not make any sense that the probability of that person to have the disease is bigger than 1. So, this is one unique problem if we fit a linear regression model to this data set. How can I avoid this problem? Okay. Rather than fitting a linear equation, I can fit some other equation which will be bounded between this uh, 1 and 0. And one such a uh, way of doing that is to use a sigmoid function, something S shaped. So, I have a sigmoid function here, 
it is a sigmoid so now i have fitted that sigmoid i will come to back I'll come to the equation of that sigmoid for the time being consider we know it so if this pink line the sigmoid s shaped curve if i fit then i can see this pink does not go beyond 1 and it does not go beyond 0 either so now if i have this model then if somebody comes with a cholesterol level somewhere here then i can use this pink line to predict the probability that the person will have the cardiac disease and based on the cutoff for example i can use 0.5 as the cutoff i can say okay his cholesterol level is this one so the probability is this one so that person has a probability above 0.5 so that person belongs to the category 1 that is the category of having cardiac disease so any point any cholesterol level beyond this cutoff beyond this cutoff will belong to category 1 so they will all belong to category 1 as you can easily see and all cholesterol level all people with cholesterol level below this cutoff will be category 0 that is no disease so in this case we have solved the problem that uh, the probability was going earlier for linear regression case beyond 1 and 0 now what type of sigmoid function i should use there are many types of sigmoid function possible in logistic regression we use a particular type of sigmoid function let us look at that so the function that we use for logistic regression is a sigmoid and its form is given here 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus x and i have plotted the graph for this sigmoid you can see when x becomes very big so suppose x tends to infinity then the sigmoid sigma x will become 1 so it saturates at 1 so this function does not go above 1 whereas in this case where x tends to minus infinity that means it becomes very small then the function becomes uh, reaches close to 0 so it is bounded on the lower side also at 0 and in between it is centered at 0 and for that its fun value is 0.5 so we have solved this problem that uh, my uh, function is bounded to 1 and 0 but you must have noticed here that it is centered around 0 now in most cases in most real life cases our predictor the predictor variable x for example the cholesterol level will not be negative right it will be always positive so if it is always positive that means i have to shape this curve on the right hand on that side positive side because i cannot have x negative right so how can i do that doing this is very simple i have not to change much of this function actually i have to uh, write it in a different fashion so what i will do rather than using x i will use a plus bx just like a linear equation so my function will be now 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus a plus bx and in this case what i have done in this diagram i have considered a equal to minus 4 and uh, b equal to 2 and you can easily see that the curve has shifted towards the positive side and it is centered around this point 2 so in this way by choosing a right value of a and b i can actually easily fit this sigmoid function to my data set which i am using as a training data to tr create the classifier now let us dig into more into this sigmoid function there are some interesting features of that so what i have i have this generalized sigmoid function 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus a plus bx and this sigmoid function sigma x varies from 1 to 0 it is bounded from 0 to 1 now if you go carefully look into my data what i have i have two data set with category 1 and category 0 and on the vertical axis i have the probability of having the disease and the vertical axis varies from 0 to 1 so if my sigmoid function also varies from 0 to 1 now probability cannot be uh, bigger than 0 less than uh, big, bigger than 1 less than 0 so as the sigmoid function 
So, in a way this sigmoid function itself is giving me the probability. Probability of what? Let us check. If somebody comes with a cholesterol level this one, then using the sigmoid function I will be able to calculate the probability of having the cardiac problem. So, I can write that using mathematical notation. I can write the probability that y equal to 1 because remember y is the category and I have two categories 1 and 0, 1 mean having the disease. So, the probability of y equal to 1 given x equal to xi, xi is the value of the uh, cholesterol level for that person, right. Probability of y equal to 1 given x equal to xi is given by 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power minus a plus b x i the sigmoid function. So, this is essentially nothing but this relation is nothing but the probability of being in category 1. And as uh, this conditional probability I have to write repeatedly. So, it is written in many short form like p x i. So, p x i is the probability that the data point x i belongs to category 1. Now, let us rearrange this uh, algebraic relationship. So, this is my relation p x i is equal to the sigmoid function with the exponential term. If you do some uh, algebraic rearrangement, you will reach this a plus b x i is equal to ln of p x i divided by 1 minus p x i. Now, what is p x i? p x i is the probability of a data being in category 1 a person is in category 1, whereas 1 minus p x i is the probability that the same data is belonging to category 0. So, this is this uh, these two term in the, the ratio form written in the inside the square bracket is the ratio of two probabilities. And if you carefully look it, this is the probability of yes and this is the probability of no. If I ask whether the person belongs to uh, the disease case or not, so the upper one this p x i is the probability of yes and the denominator is probability of no. So, if I have in gambling probability uh, the ratio between probability of winning yes and the probability of losing the no that is called odds. So, I in the square bracket I have the odds, odds of being in category 1. Now, I am taking the log of that. So, this whole thing we call log odds function or log it function and that is why this regression using this function is called logistic regression. Now, let us go back to our problem in hand. We have to use this function uh, to create a classifier that means, I have to fit this function to my data. What is my data? In the horizontal axis, I have cholesterol level. In the vertical axis, I have the probability of having cardiac problem. I have the label data. So, I know these people, these yellow data points belong to category 1 and I know these blue people or blue data point belongs to category 0. So, I have arranged them and now I want to fit that sigmoid function to this data and I should get something like that pink curve. When I say I have to fit, that means I have to estimate the value of A and I have to estimate the value of B. To achieve this, to fit this model to the data, usually we use maximum likelihood approach. There are many methods based on maximum likelihood approach and I will not go in detail of that, but I will briefly explain what is done in this case. Let us look into the probability terms first. P x i is the probability for being in category 1 and that is given by my this sigmoid function. So, the probability for being in category 0, the other it is binary case like for category 1 and category 0. So, the probability of for being in category 0 is given by 1 minus p x i because summation of these two probabilities must be equal to 1. Now, I have two equation, equation 1 and equation 2. I can actually merge these two equations together and write in a integrated fashion. What is that? I can write the probability that y is equal to y i, where y i is the categories 1 or 0, it can be either 1 
or it can be 0 category 1 or category 0. So, the probability y equal to y i given x equal to x i, x i i is a particular value or in for example, the cholesterol level of a person is equal to p x i to the power y i into 1 minus p x i to the power 1 minus y i. It may looks complicated, but do not get confused. Simply consider y i equal to 1. So, if I consider y i equal to 1, that means this sample belongs to category 1, right. Okay. So, y i equal to 1 means 1 minus 1, this will become equal to 0. Then, this whole thing is something to the power 0, that means 1. Then, I will get only this part, right. So, I will get equation 1. So, when y i equal to 1, this equation, the third equation gives me equation 1. Similarly, why do not you put y i equal to 0, the second case and you will find then this th third equation will become same as equation 2. So, we have clubbed these two equations, equation 1 and equation 2 in one generalized form and that helps us to calculate the likelihood and perform the maximum likelihood the method. So, how do I formulate the likelihood? Let us look into that. So, my probability of uh, being in category 1 p x i is equal to this sigmoid function. I do not know a and b. What do I know? For some training data set, if x i is known for a particular data, I know y i also, right. And I have this formula, this relationship probability that y equal to y i given x equal to x i and is equal to probability of x i to the power y i into 1 minus p x i uh, to the power 1 minus y i. I have this relation. So, now suppose I have uh, uh, n num n data uh, data points in my training data set. So, I have x 1 correspondingly I have y 1, x 2, x 2 correspondingly y 2. So, x 1 is the cholesterol level of the person and I know his or her category. So, y 1 that y 1 will be either equal to 1 or equal to 0. So, in this way I know x n the cholesterol level of the nth person and his or her category disease or not disease 1 or 0. So, assume to start this algorithm you can assume some particular value of a and b consider some value. Now, considering some value of a and b using this x 1 and y n 1 value, you should be able to calculate the probability p 1 using this formula. You plug this one, put y i equal to y 1, x i equal to x 1 and use this equation, you will get a probability we call it p 1. Similarly, for the second data point in my training data set, using the same value of a and b, I can calculate the probability. So, that will be p 2. Again, I am using the same equation, only the value of x and y has changed. In this way, I keep on calculating the probability for all the n data. So, for the nth data, I have p n. So, each of this data in my training data set has a associated probability p 1, p 2 up to p n. So, what is the total probability? If I consider that these data points are independent, then the total probability will be equal to p 1 into p 2 and you multiply all of them up to p n. This total probability is the likelihood of our model, we write it as L. So, if I write it in my using mathematical notation, what do I get? I get the likelihood, which is called the likelihood function is nothing but the multiplication of this one for n data point. Remember, this is nothing but p, p i, right. So, I have n data points, so I have n p's and I am multiplying this, this symbol is a representation of multiplication from i equal to 1 to n. So, this is my likelihood function. 
Now, I have calculated this likelihood value use, using a assumed value of a and b. Now, what you can do? You can change the value of a and b and again calculate the same likelihood. You new, new, new result will come and if the new result, new likelihood is better, mean bigger than the previous one, that means the probability is higher. So, I will discard the previous value of a and b, I will take the new value of a and b. So, in this way using some algorithm, you have to find out the value of a and b which will maximize my L. So, that is an optimization problem. So, what we are doing? We are finding a and b that will maximize L the likelihood function. In general, when we have the maximum of L, the log of that L is also maximum, but doing the calculation using log of L is much easier. That is why your optimization algorithm will maximize log of L. And there are many algorithms to do that. Gradient ascent, gradient descent type algorithms can be used to maximize log of the likelihood function so that you get the optimum value of A and B. And once you have got it, you have got your model. The model is nothing but this function. This is your classifier model. So, what we have discussed till now, we have taken a binary problem, binary classification problem, where I have two categories, category 1 and category 0. Category 1 belongs to people who have the cardiac problem, whereas category 0 belongs to people who does not have the disease. So, it is a binary case, right. And what we have done, we have only one predictor. The predictor is the cholesterol level. Now, imagine in most of the real life cases, actually when you will do classification, the predictor will not be one. There can be more than one predictor. For example, you can imagine the stem cell case. So, when you classify cell as stem cell, usually you will have a set of genes which you will call markers for stem cell, right? not a unique one gene. So, you may have uh, five different genes and their expression level decides whether that particular cell is stem cell or not. So, it is still a binary problem, but we have more number of predictors. So, again our uh, more training data set will be labeled in two categories, category 1 and category 0 and in category 1 we will put stem cells and in category 0 we will put non stem cell, but now we have more than one predictor variable. But in the sigmoid function that I have used, I have only one predictor variable x. So, how should I accommodate other predictors in my regression model? So, that can be done very easily. Actually, I can write a multivariate sigmoid, right. So, I will write a multivariate function where in place of x, I will have a plus b 1 x 1 plus b 2 x 2 up to b n x n. So, suppose I have five genes which are used uh, to predict whether a cell belongs to uh, stem cell class or non stem cell class. So, this is my first gene, second gene in this way up to the fifth gene. So, if you rearrange the whole thing, you can actually see this log odd ratio uh, is equal to a plus b 1 x 1 plus b 2 x 2 up to b n x n. Now, the rest of the algorithm is same you will use the max, uh, maximum likelihood based method to fit this equation to your data. You have till still the binary categorization 1 and 0 and that fitting, that maximum likelihood based model fitting will give you the value of A, B1, B2 and Bn and you will get your classifier model. So, I have dealt with uh, now the with where I have multiple predictors. Now, if we have a problem where we have multiple categories, more than two categories. That means, we are moving from binary to more than two. Take an example. For example, if you are classifying tumors, that is the first example here. If you want to classify tumor, the tumor can be classification, classified into stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and so on, different stages, more than two stages. So, I do not have any more binary problem, right? It, it has four classes. Whereas, suppose take the example of EMT, epithelial to mesenchymal transition. In epithelial to mesenchymal transition, what happens? That epithelial cell 
becomes mesenchymal, but at the same time some cells are there which are hybrid between epithelial and mesenchymal. So, if I have to classify cell during EMT, I should have three classes, epithelial, mesenchymal and hybrid. So, it is no more a binary classification problem. So, how should I handle this? There are many algorithms to do that. Uh, I will discuss one, uh, one particular algorithm that is called one versus all or one versus rest algorithm. So, what I have? Take the uh, EMT case. I have uh, three categories. I mark them as E, M and H. Now, I have three classes. Now, what I do? I create three binary log logistic regression model, not one, but three. I will explain what these threes are. Let the first model. In the model one, what I do? Category one is the cells which are epithelial type. That means all cells which are epithelial are considered in category one. Rest of the cell, that means cells which are either M or H type, mesenchymal or hybrid type, are considered into category zero. What I am doing? I have three class class classification problem, but I am converting into two class binary case. So, I have taken category 1, where I have all the E type cells, epithelial cell and the rest of the cell are put in the bin of category 0, non epithelial cell. Now, if you have this binary problem now, you create a binary classifier the way we have done just now. So, you create a binary classifier using that sigmoid function of logistic regression and you do maximum likelihood based method and create the classifier model. Now, create the second model. What is the second model? In second model, in category 1, you put M, the mesenchymal cells, whereas in category 0, you put rest of the cell E and H type. Again, you create a classifier model. So, you get this classifier model. For the third model, obviously, category 1 will have the hybrid type cell and category 0 will have epithelial and mesenchymal cell. Right? So, one and rest of the type. So, I have, I have converted this three class problem into three binary classifier problem. And for each of cases, I have uh, developed the classifier using binary classification using the logistic regression. So, I have three probability based model. Now, you have a new cell. You do not know whether it is epithelial, mesenchymal or hybrid you know the expression of certain marker genes in that. So, using the label of expression of those marker gene, you use this three classifier model A, B and C and calculate the probabilities and you take the model which gives you the maximum probability. So, for an unknown sample, use the model that gives the maximum probability. So, in this way, one versus all algorithm or one versus rest algorithm converts a multi class problem into multiple binary problem and then compare their probabilities. Let me jot down uh, what we have learned in this uh, lecture. The first thing that we have learned is that a uh, logistic regression is used for classification, both binary classification as well as multi class classification. For logistic regression, we use a logistic function which is a sigmoid and that is given here. One I have written the generalized one with multiple variable, 1 divided by 1 plus e to the power a plus minus a plus b 1 x plus b 2 x 2 up to b n x n. And we use a maximum likelihood based approach to create this classifier model that means to calculate the parameters of this model a b 1 b 2 and b n. That is all for this lecture. See you in the next lecture. Till then happy learning.